So recently there have been a rare leak containing information about a bunch of new items and item changes that might be coming to Dota 2 in the upcoming patch along with the release of the new hero Muerta. And since I found a lot of info about the items from this rare leak, I had to split up the things that I found into two separate videos. So if you guys want to know about all of these new items, make sure to check out both of these videos, links in the description. And this is part one of those videos where I'm gonna go through this rare leak and talk about these item changes and try to speculate about what these new items might be like. So without further ado, let's begin. Okay, since we know that Muerta's release is supposed to happen in early 2023, it's pretty likely that the item changes and the new items mentioned in this data leak is actually content that is supposed to be released along with Muerta in the long-awaited patch 7.33. And this data leak only gives us three pieces of information about each of these items, and that is their name, their total goal cost, and their recipe costs. But that's more than enough information for us to have some fun speculating about these items. And as such, make sure to take everything I say in this video with a grain of salt, because a lot of the things that I'm gonna say in this video will be mostly just speculation. But with all of that aside, let's begin exploring this data leak. So first off, this data leak mentions a bunch of price changes to existing items, which all stems from the fact that the gold cost of the clock item is apparently gonna double from 500 gold to 1000 gold, which subsequently seems to have caused every item that builds from a clock to get price adjustments to accommodate this change. For example, the Mage Slayer item essentially lost its recipe because of this change. And for the most part, these price changes do seem to line up, except for the changes to the Eternal Shroud and the Glimmer Cape items. Let me explain. You see, although the Hood of Defiance that builds into the Eternal Shroud got a price increase because of the increase of the price of the cloak, the Eternal Shroud itself actually got a price decrease, which doesn't really make sense because if you add all of the components, it results in a higher gold cost. And the only way that this could be explained is that if there was a recipe price decrease for the Eternal Shroud item that is somehow not mentioned in this data leak. And when we move on to the Glimmer Cape item, it also has a similar problem but it is actually worst, because even if you outright remove the recipe from its buildup, it's still not enough to match its new price. Which leads me to believe that there might be an error in the Glimmer Cape price mentioned in this data leak, or the Shadow Amulet, which is the only other component in this buildup, is actually going to receive a price decrease, and this change in price is simply not mentioned in this data leak. And both of these cases seems to suggest that some of the total item prices and the recipe prices mentioned in this data leak might be a bit off, and there are item changes that are simply not documented, like the possible price decrease of the Shadow Amulet, like I just mentioned, which also opens up the possibility that there might actually be more item changes and maybe even new items that might make an appearance in this upcoming update that is simply not mentioned in this data leak. And make sure to keep this fact in mind, because this piece of information will be needed as we continue exploring this data leak. And as such, I'm gonna to refer to this effect as hidden data leak errors from here onwards. But anyways, now let's get to the good part and talk about the new items that are revealed in this data leak. So first off, we have the harpoon item, which is a new item, but at the same time, it's not really a new item as well. Let me explain. You see, in the previous update, there was a data leak just like the one we are discussing today. And that data leak also contained this same harpoon item item as a tier 4 neutral item. So this shows that this item have been in development for a while now, hence why I say it's not really a new item. But anyway, since this new data leak mentions this same harpoon item with a 4400 gold cost, it's pretty clear that this time around this item will be released as a purchasable item instead of a neutral item. And other than its change from a neutral to a purchasable item, this item's name and function have pretty much stayed the same in both of these data leaks, because apparently you can use the following command in the demo mode to spawn this item. And when it does, it actually spawns as a neutral item, Probably because like I said before, this item was originally meant to be a neutral item. So with this in mind, let's talk about what this item does. So basically this item has a passive that procs every 10 seconds which grants your next attack increased attack range and causes it to pull the next enemy you attack towards you kinda like a pudge meat hook, but only like half the distance between your own position and the target's initial position. And it's worth noting that this harpoon pull effect doesn't proc when you are within like 400 range of the enemy that you are attacking simply because you are already close to them, and therefore it obviously doesn't work on melee heat and seems to be an exclusively ranged item. And this combined with the fact that it provides extra attack range when it procs, makes me think it's a pretty safe bet to assume that this item will be an upgraded form of the Dragon Lance. Because we know that the Dragon Lance provides extra attack range only for ranged heroes, which perfectly lines up with both of these factors. And as for its build up, its total cost is said to be 4400 gold with a 1400 recipe. And if you add the price of the Dragon Lance like I speculated, it leaves us with 1100 gold. And I think this missing item is gonna be a Javelin because it also costs 1100 gold, and even which and conceptually, a harpoon can be seen as a better javelin, anyways. And if the harpoon does include a javelin in its build up, I'm pretty sure it will have the passive PS procs that the javelins provide on top of the harpoon pull proc that occurs every 10 seconds. So, yeah, that's what I think the harpoon item might be like. But before we move on to the next new item in this data leak, I gotta talk about one last thing that I noticed about this item. You see, the placeholder icon for the harpoon item at the moment is the Draw Ranger Arcana's custom icon for the Hurricane Pike. And if you look closely at this icon, you can actually see that it has a hooked part, which lines up with the harpoon. 
ability to hook and pull enemies towards you. So it does look more like a harpoon than a pike when you think about it now. And on top of that you can also see the point of the javelin and the winged parts of the dragon lance, which perfectly aligns with the build up I expect this harpoon item to have. And because of all of these factors, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they gave the harpoon item the hurricane pike icon and gave the hurricane pike a new icon entirely. So let's wait and see if this icon swap will end up happening when this item is released into the game. And while we are on the topic of icons, just note that other than the harpoon item that I just talked about, all of the other new items in this list didn't really have proper placeholder icons that I could use. And because of this, I made a bunch of my own custom icons for all of those new items for the purposes of this video. And therefore, they obviously will not be the icons that these new items will use when they are released into the game. So with this in mind, let's talk about the next new item of this DR League, which is called the Disperser. So when I first saw the name of this item, I was a bit confused because the word Disperser can be interpreted in a lot of ways. For example, it could be a 4 staff upgrade which has active that disperses enemies away from a target point, kinda like the knockback of Batrider's Flame Break ability. Or it could also be a Dispel related item because of its name. And this reminded me of an unreleased neutral item that was mentioned in a previous item DR League called the Wand of Sanctitude, because that item was also a Dispel related item which had an active that dispelled both allies and enemies in a target AoE continuously over a small period of time. So its active was essentially a combination of the Shadow Demon's Demonic Purge plus the Demonic Cleanse minus the Slow but in an AoE, meaning it was a pretty overpowered active which explains why this item wasn't released into the game. But what if they somehow managed to balance this Wand of Sanctitude item and they are now gonna release it as the Disperser item instead? And if this is the case, the Disperser item could be an upgraded form of the Lotus Orb because that is also a Dispel related item. But unfortunately, when you factor in the price of the Lotus Orb with the prices mentioned for the Disperser item in this DR League, it leaves us with a bit of extra gold which doesn't really give us any options for a proper build up for such an item, meaning it's a dead end. And this brings me to the third possibility, where the Disperser could be a Diffuser Blade upgrade because these two words do have similar meanings. And this is a possibility because the Diffuser Blade did have an upgraded form called the Diffuser Blade 2 which got removed from the game a while back. However, in the 7.31 update, this item almost made a return because in that update there was a DR League containing information about 4 unreleased items. And actually I made a whole video talking about those items, so if you guys want to check it out, links in the description. But anyways, out of those 4 unreleased items, one of them was the Diffuser Blade 2, which for whatever reason didn't end up getting released in that update. So there is a chance that this Disperser item could be the Diffuser Blade 2 item returning with a different name. But even if you assume that the Disperser is a Diffuser Blade upgrade, I noticed that the build up of the Diffuser Blade 2 item from that previous DR League doesn't seem to match with the prices of the Disperser item that is mentioned in this DR League. So if they really are the same item, the build up of this item clearly seems to have been changed this time around. And because of this I came up with the following build up, which perfectly matches the prices mentioned in this DR League, and it does look like a reasonable build up for a potential Diffuser Blade 2 upgrade. But anyways, although all of the options that I just talked about could be possibilities of what the Disperser item might be like, I then remembered that Spectre literally has an ability with a similar name to this Disperser item called Dispersion. And since Dispersion reflects the percentage of the damage done to Spectre, I think this Disperser item might end up being an upgraded form of the Blade Mail item, because reflecting damage is what Blade Mail does. And since Dispersion completely blocks the damage that it returns, I thought this item might build from a Blade Mail plus a Vanguard, because Vanguard does have a damage block passive. But when I factored in the recipe and the total cost of this item mentioned in this DR League, the overall price of this item didn't really match for this build up. So maybe this might be another case of hidden DR League errors, where the recipe cost mentioned in this DR League is somehow wrong, or this item might actually be a Diffuser Blade upgrade, because that build up I suggested earlier did line up nicely with the prices mentioned about this item. However, I still had a strong feeling that the Disperser item is going to be a Blade Mail upgrade rather than an upgrade for 4 staff, Lotus Orb, or even a Diffuser Blade like I said before. And because of this reason, I did a lot of searching and I found a fitting icon for a Blade Mail upgrade by reusing the icon of the Carapace of Kraldin item from the Sealed Breaker event. And I also came up with the following build up for this item which works perfectly. Because first off, the prices set up to the total gold cost of the Disperser item, and on top of that, the bonus health provided by the Fluffy Hat and the health and the mana region provided by the Perseverance does nicely complement the Blade Mail damage reflection active. Plus, this build up is kinda similar to the Lotus Orb build up, where both of them have a Perseverance, a suit of Farmer, an item that grants bonus health and bonus mana respectively, which is kinda fitting because both of these items have similar actives that reflects damage and reflects spells back at enemies. So yeah, I think this might be the actual build up of this Disperser item. And since it's an upgraded form of the Blade Mail, I think this item will have a better version of the Blade Mail's active that not only reflects the damage done to you back at the enemy who dealt the damage, but it will also disperse a percentage portion of that same damage to all of the enemies around you based on the relative distance between them and yourself. And this would explain why this item is called the Disperser in the first place, because what I just described is very similar to what the Spectre's Dispersion ability does as well. And speaking of Spectre, I kinda have a feeling that this Disperser item 
it might end up being the cursed set of armor that Spectre wears in her Arcana form, because this could be the reason why this item's name and function is very similar to Spectre's dispersion ability. Plus on top of that, this item seems to be an upgraded form of blade mail, which as we know is an armor just like Spectre's Arcana armor. And we also know that the blade mail item is a very common purchase on this hero, so much to the point that the blade mail is actually one of the two items that got custom icons in the Spectre's Arcana. And this combined with the fact that we already have Monkey King's Bar, Antimage's Mage Slayer, Primal Beast Glepnir, and even Muerta's Revenant's Brooch as purchasable items in game, it is entirely possible that the Disperser item might actually end up being Spectre's Arcana armor making its way into Dota 2 as a purchasable in-game item. But anyways, with all of that out of the way, let's move on to the next new item of this Dare League. And the next new item mentioned in this Dare League is the Samurai Tabi. And a Tabi is a kind of Japanese sock that have a split toe design. And since the Tabi is a kind of sock, it was often worn with other types of footwear such as Geta or Zori. And Samurai and in some cases even Ninjas favored these footwear combinations because together they were both sturdy and versatile. And they had many benefits like providing protection against injuries, resistance to the cold which allowed them to adapt to colder environments, while also allowing them to plant their feet firmly on the ground to avoid slipping or losing balance when they are fighting in the battlefield. And all of this would explain why this item is called the Samurai Tabi. And I'm pretty sure that this item will be an upgraded form of the power treads because we already found out that the Tabi is a kind of footwear that is all about adapting and standing your ground against your opponents, which lines up nicely with the description and the function of the power treads in game. And this does make sense if you think about it, because they have been gradually introducing more and more upgraded forms for existing boot items over the years. So I think the Samurai Tabi is the power treads upgrade that we have been waiting for. So when we factor in the price of the power treads with the recipe and the total price of this item mentioned in this Dare leak, it leaves us with 2050 gold for its other components. And I have seen that some people say that this missing component is going to be an ultimate orb, but I don't think this is the case because the ultimate orb provides all stats at once, while the power treads is all about switching through each individual attribute at a time separately. And actually, when I first saw this gold cost, the ultimate orb didn't even come to my mind because I knew exactly what the other component or components are going to be, and they are Sanj, Yasha, and Kaya, because each of these items also cost 2050 gold. And I was expecting this item combination to happen sooner or later down the line, simply because the power treads combining with each of these three items is an obvious upgrade path for the power treads. And therefore, even I created an item using this same item combination during my free time. And maybe I will talk about my version of the power treads later on. But anyways, with all of this information, we can expect the Samurai Starby to have the following things. First off, we can expect it to have three different ways that it can build into its final form, just like how the power treads that it builds from also had three possible build-ups. And obviously, it will definitely inherit the same stat toggling ability that the power treads has. And on top of the attribute bonuses that these three forms usually provide, we can expect the San, Jasha, and Kaya to grant the following additional bonuses to their respective attribute forms. And it seems like they have been considering an idea like this for a while now, because this item clearly seems to be an improved version of the unreleased Grandmaster's Glaive item that was mentioned in a previous Dare League just like this one, because that item also had three build-ups that combined one of these three items with a basher to create the Grandmaster's Glaive item, which had the power to toggle between the three attributes just like power treads. And since this Grandmaster's Glaive item gave more bonuses on top of the bonuses that was provided by these items like shown here, I think this Samurai Starby might also do something similar. And my guess is that since this item is all about stats and stat swapping, it might actually give like a 10% stat bonus boost based on the stat that you have currently chosen or something like that. And judging by all of these traits, it's pretty obvious that the Samurai Starby is definitely an improved iteration of the unreleased Grandmaster's Glaive item. And one last thing I want to say about this item is that I kind of have a hunch that the Samurai Starby will have the unique benefit to stack with other boot items and even stack with the effects of the upgraded forms of these three items, which by default have effects that do not stack with themselves. But since the reasoning behind this assumption have a lot to do with in-game balance and my version of the power treads upgrade that I mentioned earlier, I can't really explain why I think this is the case in this video. But later, if I do release a video talking about my version of the power treads upgrade, I will talk about why I think this is the case, regardless of whether this will actually end up being the case for the Samurai Starby item. However, what I will say is that since they specifically chose this item to be a Tabi, it's pretty likely that this item will be able to stack with other boot items. Because like I said before, the Tabi is a kind of sock that was often worn with other types of footwear, which does allude to the possibility that the Samurai Starby might stack with other boot items in game. So let's wait and see if this will actually turn out to be the case. But anyways, next up we have the Hermes Sandals, and its name alone gives us a clear idea about what this item might be like, because Hermes is the messenger of gods in Greek mythology, and he does own a couple of special winged sandals called Teleria, which allowed Hermes to move faster and actually fly. And you may have seen them in action if you watched the Percy Jackson movie. And all of these traits makes it pretty obvious that the Hermes sandals will probably build from face boots and will have an upgraded form of the face active, which not only allows you to move faster and gain face movement, but it will also grant you flying movement while it's active. And I actually found evidence 
that this item have been in development for a while now and seems to have gone through at least two iterations during its development. Because while I was researching for one of my previous videos, I stumbled upon the old unused item icon for an item called Travel Slippers. And you can see that this icon is clearly depicting the winged sandals of Hermes. And what's interesting is that just like the name of this Travel Slippers item suggests, it was apparently originally supposed to be an old concept for what later became the Boots of Travel 2 item that we have in game, which suggests that an idea to create a boot item based on Hermes sandals was in their mind for a very long time. And the fact that they never used this icon for the Boots of Travel 2 means that they must have come to the conclusion that the powers associated with the Hermes sandals like the superhuman movement speed and the power of flight that it provides is way more suited for a face boots upgrade rather than a Boots of Travel upgrade, which leads me to believe that they will finally use the Travel Slippers unused icon for this upcoming Hermes sandals item when it is released into the game. So we can say that the Travel Slippers is kinda like the first iteration of this item. And like I mentioned once before, there also seems to be a second iteration for this item as well. Because in a previous item data leak, there was an unreleased neutral item called Icarus Wings, which despite its name used a placeholder icon of a sock, which is a type of footwear just like the Hermes Sandals item. And on top of that, this item had an active that granted its user flying movement for a few seconds, which like I said before is exactly what I expect the Hermes Sandals items active to do as well. And since the Icarus Wings item never ended up getting released and both Icarus and Hermes are characters from Greek mythology, it's pretty likely that the Hermes Sandals item is probably going to be an improved version of that unreleased Icarus Wings item. Item. But with the origins of this item aside, now let's talk about this item's build up. So since I expect the Hermes sandals to be an upgraded form of the face boots item, we must first deduct the cost of face boots and the recipe cost from the total gold cost of this item mentioned in this data leak, which leaves us with 2800 gold for its other components. However, only these three items cost that amount, and honestly, I don't think any of these items is gonna build into the Hermes sandals because all of these items are stat related items, and we already talked about how we are gonna get a stat related boot with the Samurai Starby item that we discussed earlier. So it's kinda redundant to make the Hermes sandals also a stat related boot. And therefore I tried to find other items that might fit the bill and use Scepter was a possible candidate because it does have an active that lifts you off the ground. However, I don't think this might be the case as well because first off the prices don't match and if you look at this item combination in terms of in-game balance, it will present a huge problem because this will essentially combine the low cooldown of the face active with the invulnerability provided by the use active which would make such an item combination simply too overpowered to be in the game. I mean we already have the Windbreaker item which essentially does the same thing. And that item is balanced because it has a relatively high gold cost and a higher cooldown. So yeah, I don't think use will be the missing component. And therefore I think the missing item is actually going to be two or more cheaper items that is going to add up to this gold cost. And to be honest, there are a lot of item choices that potentially could go into this build up. And some of them are shown here. But out of all of these options, the Windlace and the Talisman of Evasion stood out to me the most. Because the former fits the idea of the Hermes sandals allowing its user to travel faster, while the latter further builds upon this theme and makes it user essentially hard to catch by providing them with passive evasion and I can see the talisman of evasion granting even more evasion whenever this item's active allows its user to fly. So as you can see both of these items fits the theme of the Hermes channels really well and after going through a lot of possibilities I eventually settled on this build up even though I sadly had to omit the win list to make the prices add up to the total gold cost of this item and although I'm not 100% sure about this build up I'm pretty sure that the Hermes channels is definitely going to be a face boots upgrade but anyways with the addition of these two items it means that we will find finally have an upgraded form for all of the boot options we have in game and I noticed that they all have a gold cost between 4000 to 5000 gold which is kinda nice and another thing I couldn't help but notice is the fact that these two boot items are kinda similar to a couple of boot items from League of Legends and although this makes it look like Dota is now taking ideas from League of Legends the more I thought about it I realized that might not be the case because like I said once before the Tabi is a kind of Japanese sock that was worn by both ninjas and samurai so that clears up why these two items are similar and then we have these two items which are connected to each other by the fact that Mercury and Hermes are the Roman and the Greek names of the same entity. And this link obviously seems to have happened because he owned the winged sandals Teleria, which is perhaps one of the most popular magical footwear in all of mythology. So it's not that surprising that both of these games created these two boot items around this popular myth. So basically, all of this means that the similarities between these items are probably not cases of these two games copying each other. However, it's worth noting that we do have a Dota 2 hero that feels like she belongs in League of Legends, so I wouldn't completely rule out this possibility just yet. But with all of that aside, one last thing I want to say about these two boot items is that just like how the Glepnia and the Revenant's Brooch items are connected to the Primal Beast and the upcoming hero Muerta and hinted about their upcoming release, I think the Samurai Starby will have a high chance of being linked to the bird Samurai hero that was leaked a while ago, because their names do seem to line up. And in the same vein, I also think the Hermes Sandals item could also be connected to the data leak hero called the Wind Dancer 
Master, who is also known as the Fighters, because like this hero's name suggests this hero has wind related powers, which lines up with this item's potential ability to literally fly. So these two items have the potential to give us hints about these two upcoming heroes, just like what happened with these two other cases, because this seems to be an ongoing trend in Dota 2 nowadays. And by the way guys, if you want more details on these two upcoming heroes, I actually made videos talking all about them in detail a while back, so make sure to check them out if you like and the links for those videos will be in the description box below. But anyways, that's it for this video guys. If you guys like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos like this and comment down below and let me know what you guys think about the new items mentioned in this daily because I would really like to know what you guys think. And since this is a two part video series, make sure to check out the other part of this video series if you want to know about all of the new items and item changes that was mentioned in this daily. And I will leave the link for that video and all of the other related videos to this video in the description box below so that you guys can check them out if you like. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.